Today, I've got an amazing Patree game for you. My best one I've ever had. I really have a love and hate relationship with the Patree. It's not a ship that I consistently enjoy playing. And you're gonna see reasons for both sides, why I really like it sometimes and why it can be a little frustrating to play in this game. Although the ship is the Super Republic, the Super Tier 11 French battleship, you don't get a gimmick here. You don't get a funny button like the Satsuma or the Hanover um, or even the Yushikov gets. This is a purely vanilla super battleship, I suppose. And in that way, it's kind of nice. You're always a very consistent ship. You know what to expect out of it. Well, you're not really waiting for that extra powerful ability to come back on off cooldown or uh, farm up enough um, accurate salvos to actually have a ship that is very powerful. As you can see, three citadels, we nearly kill a rune at well over 20 kilometers. The shell velocity is amazing. These are Republic guns after all. You just get a whole nother turret on the Republic, which sounds amazing. It really does. Just the dispersion is the issue. The ship is not as accurate as the Republic and you don't have the reload of the Republic either. So you lose reload, you lose accuracy, but I guess you gain some shell volume. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a weird trade-off, especially since there's no gimmick here. There's no button that says I have 30% better accuracy or even 35% better accuracy on these guns every once in a while. It's just this better, I guess, Republic guns. Um, and as you know, I sometimes really dislike Republic guns. So we do have an insane initial salvo on the rune, and then we're just going to have a bunch of mediocre salvos. And that's really how the Republic farms damage as well. I find myself doing very well in the Republic, but it's not always the most satisfying of games where it's just very consistent low amounts of damage instead of these big impactful salvos that I think of when I'm playing a battleship, which can be fine too. You just have to adjust your expectations to it. I suppose in this game though, we are fighting Kremlins and Kerfers and Hanovers, so it's not like we're going to be having those crazy overmatching or devastating strike kind of salvos. Now that the rune has been taken out, uh, it's just gonna be a lot of damage in on these battleships, but we're gonna do some pretty good work. The armor isn't really much to write home about. It's not a ship that I want to be full tanking the enemy team, especially when there's HE around, even though we do get a little bit more HP. 32 mil armor everywhere still is the case on the Patrice. So I'm always looking for opportunities to get good salvos in, support my team without over committing my ship and getting myself focused down. It's very easy to die in the Patrice, in my opinion. I find it pretty easy at least. Um, 17k into Hanover superstructure. <laughs> Baby Hanover doesn't have the best armor either. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but at least here we are able to bounce some of the battleships we're fighting against. Hanover does overmatch us but it's a Hanover. It's not gonna have the best dispersion in the world, even though we are a big target. I'm not too worried at these ranges. But being burned down, a lot of HE spam is more than capable of penning 32 millimeters at this tier. That's the worry, and we don't really have to deal with that in this game. Fortunately, also, we're clumped up in a death ball. As always, that's your best course of action against a carrier. And they even have, I think it's a Malta in this game, a really insanely powerful carrier. And we're not really gonna have to deal with him much at all this game, thanks to just being clumped up as a team. I really love flanking routes, as a lot of you know. Um, a lot of my videos, my best ones, contain my ship just flanking and trying to get into really awkward positions for the enemy team to deal with. And that's not necessarily going to be this video. It's nice to know that you don't have to do those really risky plays and get yourself focused out by the carrier. Um, and flanking like that. You can just play as your team, support the right ships, fire at the right targets, and do a really good job as well. That's often what the situation will call for. I just personally enjoy those flanking uh, flanking routes. As you can saw on that last salvo on that Hanover, did like 2,000 damage to him, missed almost entirely. It's okay, the guns are just okay sometimes. They're amazing, but they just feel okay a lot of the time to me. I can't really trust fully in the Petri guns, although I suppose that I should say for every battleship. Really, the only guns that I can trust are the Satsuma ones when I have the gimmick available, that funny button of 35% accuracy. And even then, we all know about the shells landing short and other aiming bugs that want to come say hello as soon as you have uh, the right target of opportunity. So a lot's gone on and not a lot of damage, 125k. 
and that was a couple minutes that we were up uh, over 100k and hardly did anything after that. That's this ship, man. That is this ship in a nutshell. We are going to have an insane game. I'm going to be getting close to my damage record, which for those of you who don't know, um, the most damage I've ever done in this game is in my Ohio, and I did 409,000 damage. Although that was pre-nerfed Ohio, so keep in mind that I was playing a bit of a better version of the Ohio back in the day. Um, that really did involve secondaries a lot. IFHE secondaries actually penned 27 millimeters, and we had a lot of ships around with 27 mil armor. Des Moines had more 27 mil plating, it didn't have its 30 mil buffs yet. That kind of stuff has been removed a little bit, so secondaries aren't as useful on the Ohio. And really talking about secondaries on the Petri, there's, I think in this game, someone asked in the in-game chat about Petri secondaries. They're not worth going for. For whatever reason, you only get 100 mil secondaries, where the uh, Republic and Borgone get these 127 mil ones that at least do pen superstructures. These don't even pen superstructures. Um, here, though, is an opportunity to say that this ship sometimes does insane things. Uh, <laughs> don't ask me how we sit at El to Hanover through its turtle back. Um, but yes, as much as I can be frustrated with Petri guns and feel like, wow, they did no damage when they really should have, somehow we get that salvo. So you can just see the absolute power of these guns. The pen is, I guess, enough to go through Hanover turtle back. And uh, the grouping there was more than enough to do really insane damage. And we're just like that, up to 203,000. So it feels a little bit RNG based when I'm playing the Petri, but uh, if you get enough good rolls of the dice, you are gonna do some really awesome stuff as far as damage is concerned. I'm just bow tanking here. I'm not really too worried. The enemy team doesn't really have a lot, especially now that the Hanover's gone, that can do a lot of damage to me here. 32 mil is enough to bounce all these battleship salvos. So I'm not too worried about reversing off here and just taking some time to assess our situation. 210k is always nice. We have a triple cap here, so there's not really too much worry about losing this game outside of over pushing, pushing into the enemy spawn, trying to win harder. I think we've all been there when our team or maybe even ourselves, I've done it sometimes myself, where I just want to push in for that little bit of extra damage and uh, we end up throwing a game or two based on over committing, trying to win a little bit harder. So I'm trying not to do that as much, especially in these super ship games. Uh, some of these ships are very powerful and can definitely turn battles very quickly. They do have a Satsuma still alive on the other side of the map. And of course they still have a carrier. So by no means is this game over. We do have to play a little bit smart still. Um, but always looking for the broadside targets, of course, with the Petri and uh, hopefully gonna do some decent damage into the GK here. 23, it's pretty good. Um, that's a, probably a little bit above average, I would say, even though I would want it to do more consistently than that through a broadside GK, but 20 will take. Um, but back to the secondaries, um, if I didn't fully explain it well enough, um, 100 mil secondaries on the French line, they don't even pen the superstructures of battleships, cruisers, or even destroyer superstructures, I believe. That one I might be wrong about, but they, don't, they definitely don't pen uh, destroyer hull armor which is uh, much more important when it comes to secondaries. Of course, with French secondaries, you also don't have any improved accuracy. So even though the range has been buffed to be as much as the German line, you don't go any uh, accuracy on them. So they're just very standard secondaries. And the idea with them would mostly be to set fires, of course. But as we're gonna see, we're gonna get a lot of secondary hits on this Kremlin as he's pushing in. And our fires aren't gonna be all that much. Maybe one or two fires over the course of this entire brawl, if you can call it that. So no, I don't really think a secondary Petri is going to be all that useful. Although I was looking forward to it when the ship was in testing, when I saw the uh, reload and the theoretical DPM of these secondaries, until I realized they were these small caliber 100 mil secondaries. It's a little unfortunate on that front, um, but hey, our Montana goes down. The enemy team is pushing back in. Our team is getting pushed away from the caps. What's gonna happen here at the end? We got 260k, which is already a really, really solid game. But I'm just gonna reverse off. We still have decent HP. I'm still trying to kill this GK. He's doing a great job of staying alive this game. I should probably be switching to HE to farm this Kremlin. That would be the smart thing. Um, Patri HE is also very, very strong and has decent fire chance. Hey, there's our first secondary fire after what? 60 hits? Um, yeah, not amazing performance from that one. <laughs> 
But hey, the Malta's pushed in. We're going to get a nice salvo in there. Nearly 300k now. Feeling pretty good about that. And I really wished I would have taken him out there, to be honest with you. But at least now, with a little bit of adrenaline rush, our reload is fast enough to uh, get the second salvo in, I guess, before anyone else is able to finish him off. It's always very satisfying if you're the one that does take out the carrier. And there we go. Props to him, though, for pushing in when the game was about to be lost. A lot a lot of people don't do that in this game. They just kind of accept the loss and don't even try to do that last desperation push in. But uh, this guy went for it, even in a carrier. Um, and as his team was pushing up, maybe if he had timed it a little bit differently, um, maybe that would have been a little bit more successful. Had I been pushed back a little bit farther from this Kremlin, behind this island maybe, that, uh, that definitely could have worked. But I respect it. Those late game pushes are always the most fun for me as a player. I'm trying to really enjoy these closer range scenarios instead of just the sniping. Even though we have done quite a bit of sniping this game. And that's what super ships really are all about is long range combat. Um, but these brawls are a lot of fun as well. And if you're going to lose some of these games, just give a Hail Mary YOLO push in at the end. You never know what's going to happen. Sometimes that's where my best games happen. If you just get a little bit lucky and the enemy team doesn't, you can actually turn some of those games around into wins that otherwise uh, would be losses. Although the games do have to be close enough. The points, the cap zones, all that stuff. So not going to happen all the time, but sometimes worth going for anyway, if you're going to die and uh, lose anyways. To finish off this game, though, I was really hoping to get up to that damage record. I was kind of snit smelling it. I was like, there's 132,000 damage left in this game, as we can see at the top. And that's more than enough to break my damage record. I was really hoping for it. This Satsuma, I was thinking, he turns broadside. This is my ticket. I just need a few Citadels, and uh, we're going to get a nasty Salvo in here. And that'll be it, right? Um, well, not necessarily. He does decide to angle into us, which is fair enough. And I'm always trying to finish off this Kerr first. I've been trying to kill him basically the whole game, so I really want to take him out at this point. And the Satsuma is angled, so if I do see him again, which we do, I'm going to try and take another shot in and take him out, as well as flank around this Kremlin. I'm trying to get into his broadside and do a bunch of damage, although, as you can see, our carrier does a decent job, and the Kremlin's probably going to push forward, so it might be a good idea to stop here and wait for him. And I still don't kill the GK. <laughs> I swear, this is the tankiest GK. I've just had a really difficult time dealing with this guy. There we go, the broadside Satsuma, finally. Um, at this range, do we have enough pen to actually get his Citadel? I'm actually not sure. I feel like we probably should, although it's pretty well armored. And yeah, we got a torpedo protection hit, alongside some good pen damage. So 362 now, um, not too bad, but now there's really not much of a chance. Kremlin's taken far too much damage and uh, He's probably going to die, so we decide to push forward, see if I can finish off this GK finally. And uh, unfortunately, that is going to be the end of the game. I'm only going to get a salvo in here on the GK before uh, the Kremlin goes down as well. And then that's going to be the game. So 370,000 damage. This is my new best damage in the Petri for sure. Not best for myself overall, but uh, I'll take it. Although it did still feel a little bit like those Republic games I was telling you about, where I'm just shooting all game and eventually the damage stacks up. But uh, we did at least have a few really impactful salvos there. One on the rune earlier on, and then we somehow citadeled a Hanover through his turtleback. Uh, not sure exactly how that happened, but Patree is a very strong ship when Dispersion cooperates. As for the build that I'm running on the Petri at the moment is my uh, tinfoil hat, scared of CVs build. Uh, I'm starting to use some of these upgrades just for those opportunities where there's just carriers every game and uh, they just happen to be around where my ship is at. Petri is very powerful. I'm often playing some of these really strong battleships, so I don't really blame the carrier for going after me. Um, but I do want to be a little bit prepared for it, so I'm trying these builds. I'm not sure how great they are. But as you saw in that game, we were able to pump out more than enough damage and do a reasonable job tanking. I'm still taking the normal upgrades here in the fourth slot. Adrenaline Rush is a must, but I'm not taking basic survivability and I'm not taking either Grease the Gears or Vigilance. So I'm giving up some tankiness to hopefully do a little better against the carrier. Not sure how that's really working, 
Um, to be honest with you, I haven't had a crazy AA-based game in the Petri yet, but uh, I'll upload it and let you know when I do. Otherwise, the skills here are very damage-focused, pretty standard stuff, I would say. Um, but personally, I don't find giving up, what is this, five points too much um, to deal a little bit more damage and feel a little safer against carriers. Again, though, not exactly sure if it's working or uh, maybe it's just enough that... Uh, it just is a placebo thing and helps me sleep at night a little better. Something like that. I don't know. Uh, but that is the Petri. That is my best game so far in this ship. I hope you guys enjoyed watching that one. Uh, thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.